Hey, it's Kyle here, and today I'll be uh, taking a look at some of my favorite nonfiction books that kind of focus on some um, ancient history, uh, either figures from ancient history or certain events. Um, so I'm excited to kind of uh, take a look at some of these books. Um, this is a period of history that I do enjoy studying a lot, that I think a lot of times tends to get overlooked now, as I think more people that are kind of casual nonfiction readers tend to focus on more recent events, stuff like uh, World War II, for example. Um, but, and not saying I, I find that very interesting as well, but also like some ancient history I do find very, very interesting. Now I definitely try to read a couple books from that era every year um, if I can. Uh, but here are some of my favorites. I'm not putting these in any specific order, um, so you know this is not like a top five or anything. Either. Just some of my favorites. Um, First up, you have Alexander by Theodore Dodge, and I'll also highlight um, Alexander of Macedon by Harold Lamb. Um, Alexander the Great, to me, is one of the more fascinating figures from history, uh, so I really wanted to highlight uh, books about him. Um, is one of those figures when you read about and study, you almost feel like this cannot be real. This almost has to be a myth. They had to make this person up. There's no way somebody so young could have accomplished so much. Um, you know, never was defeated in battle, conquered more of the world than anybody had before them. That you know, basically, almost every military leader that came after tried to measure themselves up against Alexander the Great. Um, just what he accomplished in a very short time, at a very young age. Like I said, it almost feels more like it would be a Hollywood movie or an ancient myth, not something that's actually based in history. So, um, I would definitely recommend finding a non-fiction book about Alexander, be it the couple I mentioned or any others, because he is such an interesting figure. If the author is halfway decently talented, it's going to be a fascinating book, because he is such a fascinating and interesting figure in history. Um, in fact, it's been a little bit since I've read a book about him, so I was thinking it's probably time for me to find a new book about Alexander the Great and read him, because regardless of who has written the book, every book I've ever read about Alexander the Great I've always really enjoyed, because again, he is such a fascinating figure. It's hard to write something about him that wouldn't be interesting. Next up is a book that it hasn't been too long since I read, um, fairly recently, The Rise of Athens, The Story of the World's Greatest Civilization by Anthony Ebert. And this book takes a look at the, um, kind of the rise of Athens and how it became such an important part of being, you know, the basis of so much what we consider essential parts of Western civilization. And how this small little city in Greece was able to establish itself as almost, you know, the, the foundation of Western civilization. And, and it even takes a look, you know, there's other major Greece, Greek cities in like, how, why was Athens able to kind of break above those cities to become such an important part of civilization? And, you know, what led to that? What figures, what kind of characteristics the city and the, civil, the populace of the city resulted in Athens having this huge impact on civilization? Um, it's a very fascinating read. I've never really read a book focusing just on the history of Athens and how it became such an important city. And I really, really enjoyed it. Found it very interesting, very enlightening. So if you're kind of interested in learning a little bit more about Athens, I would definitely recommend you checking out this book. Um, it definitely gives you a good idea of how Athens developed its values and why ways that really kind of goes on to kind of show you like what are the important values of Western civilization and how they developed and how they work in the modern world, I guess you could say. So The Rise of Athens, The Story of World's Greatest Civilization by Anthony Ebert. And the um, next two books I want to highlight uh, probably cover the period of ancient history that I find the most interesting, and that is the Roman Republic slash Roman Empire. And both the books I am taking a look at specifically um, focus on the transition period from the Republic becoming the Empire and how that happened. Now, this is not the only period of Roman history that I like to read about. It just happens to be these two books are my favorite books about Rome. And that is uh, The Rubicon, The Last Years of the Roman Republic by Tom Holland, and then um, SPQR, A History of Ancient Rome by Mary Beard. Um, 
Rome um, has such a huge influence on everything that came after it in Western civilization. It's so influential. Um, and, you know, you have the Roman Republic, which, you know, is such an important role model for democracies later. Um, but, you know, the Roman Republic did become the Roman Empire. And it is very interesting to study and read about how this transition happened. Because it didn't happen all at once. Like, a lot of times people think of a government falling and something replacing it, you know, be it a democracy turning into a dictatorship. Or a dictatorship being overthrown and you know, a democracy coming after, or whatever transition, these big changes in a country's fate. A lot of times people kind of think it's something that happens just instantly or even just a short period of time. In reality, that's not. A lot of times it's something that kind of slowly builds up year after year after year, and it's a long process. And I think both those books I just highlighted do an excellent job of showing, like, it's not just in one, you know, year this happened, or one figure. A lot of people t tend to put everything on, oh, Julius Caesar is the reason this happened. Where in reality, the process for the Republic becoming an empire had started long before Julius Caesar was even born. And um, those books, both of them do an amazing job of delving into a very detailed manner uh, for everything from the regular person to the military and civilian leadership, what roles they played in the Roman Republic becoming the Roman Empire. And also how Rome became such a dominant power while this transition was going on. So many cases in worldwide history, when there's a transition like that, you know, from one form of government to the other, that country usually goes on the downward path, or it was struggling and it goes upward. This is one of the few trend examples I can think of in world history where you have the Roman Republic had already established itself as kind of a dominant player in the world, and it became an empire, and it became even more dominant. Um, so, I always, um, like I said, enjoy reading about Roman history, so if you've never really read much on ancient history, you know, a book about Rome um, is hard to go wrong with. I really enjoy that. So anyway, so those are some of my favorite uh, books about ancient history. Um, there was a few books I considered putting in there, but I felt like it was a little too um, recent, because I, I had a hard time figuring out, oh, what do I want to classify exactly as ancient history? So a couple books I will mention that I thought about, and I was like, I don't think that's really ancient, is there's a few books I've read about the Mongolian Empire that I found very interesting. Um, Genghis Khan is, much like Alexander the Great, it's almost hard to believe he's a real figure. Um, there's also uh, a couple books I've read about the Vikings that I found very interesting. But again, that's not really ancient history. There's a really um, cool book I've read about the Crusade that I really enjoyed, but again, that's not really ancient history. So I figure I'll probably do another book, another video at some point that kind of focuses on maybe, you know, that period, maybe from like the fall of Rome to the Renaissance. So I'll try to do some books in there, some of my favorites in that era. But anyway, so you have that to look forward to in the future. Um, in the comment section below, please let me know what are some of your favorite uh, figures or events or nations from ancient history that you'd like to read about. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. I really appreciate the support. And always, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I really love it anytime I see somebody new subscribe to the channel. It really warms my heart. Some. So please subscribe if you haven't yet. Anyway, like I said, hope you enjoyed the video. Happy reading, and I'll see you the next time.